In this presentation module, we talk about another SAT attack resilient logic locking technique. Um, it's called anti-SAT, and we talk about its vulnerabilities. So, first, let's talk about anti-SAT. <clears throat> anti-SAT was proposed uh, very recently, last year, in chess, and the idea is to insert an error into a circuit with a block, that is, the anti-SAT block. Uh, which receives the keys as well as some internal signals from the circuit. Now this anti-SAT block consists of two complementary blocks um, inside and these two complementary blocks are ended together to produce the signal that inserts an error into the original circuit. These two blocks are complementary only when correct keys are applied to them. So when the correct keys are applied these two blocks are complementary and when the two complementary blocks are ended together they produce a zero which means they do not inject any error into the circuit and the circuit operates correctly but when wrong keys incorrect keys are applied to the anti-sap block then an error is injected an error is produced by the anti-sap block and injected into the circuit now the magnitude of this error can be controlled uh, by adjusting the onset of these complementary blocks inside the anti-SAT block. As long as the magnitude of this error is small, anti-SAT makes sure that the dips that the SAT attack uh, produces are limited in effectiveness in terms of their distinguishing abilities. And that's how anti-SAT um, resists against the SAT attack. So to give an example, in an anti-SAT block we can have a big entry and we can have a big NAND tree, and these two blocks will be complementary as long as the correct keys are applied. But when the incorrect keys are applied, they're no longer complementary. They are they produce some for for a certain set of inputs, they produce the same values, and as a result, an error in, is injected into the original circuit. So for an AND gate, the onset is one. So there's only one input pattern for which these two um, blocks, G and G complement, will be producing the same values and injecting an error into the circuit. And this means that there is only one input pattern producing an error, so the, the effectiveness of the dips will be quite limited. But to generalize, we can actually have a general block. Instead of an N, we could have a general block G with an onset uh, magnitude of P. So a block that produces a 1 for p different input patterns could be used in place of g but in that case uh, the number of patterns that will be producing the error and injecting it into the original circuit would be uh, more than one it will be actually p so it's an adjustable parameter for very small values of p or very large values of p and we talked about an AND gate where p is 1 and an AND gate where p is 2 to the n minus 1 the set attack will be thwarted because the effectiveness of the dips will be quite limited. But for um, onset values, like when p approaches 2 to the n divided by 2, we're talking about random functions, and in those cases, set attack will be successful because the dips will be more effective in terms of distinguishing incorrect keys. So this uh, chart illustrates where set attack will be um, resisted and where SAT attack will be successful. In the middle region, the SAT attack will, will be successful, but when P approaches 1, or when P is very large, it approaches 2 to the end, uh, SAT attack will not be successful. So, recently, um, we developed a signal probability skew attack targeting uh, solutions such as anti-SAT. Anti-SAT successfully thwarts the SAT attack by adjusting that P parameter, but at the same time it leaves certain structural traces behind. And we developed a signal probability skew attack that exploits this fact and traces the logic, does an analysis, structural analysis on, on the logic netlist to, to follow these traces and understand the boundaries of the anti-SAP block and remove the anti-SAP block. So in the threat model, um, we the attacker needs only a locked netlist, as opposed to the previous attacks where also a functional IC is used as an oracle, in signal probability skew attack, there is no need for an oracle. So in that sense, the attack is 
more powerful because the required assets is less. We only need the locked netlist, which is traced, looking for hints to identify the anti-sat block and remove it. So what kind of trace are we looking for? Um, we're looking for uh, signals that are skewed. So we therefore, pro, uh, we def we therefore define signal probability skew concept, um, where, which is defined by uh, the probability of a signal being 1 uh, minus 0.5. So a signal that is mostly 1, most of the time 1, it's skewed towards 1, it will get a skew value of 0 0.5. A signal that is mostly 0, it's skewed towards 0, then the skew value will be most of the time 0 0.5. But if we're talking about signals, that is 50% of the time 0 and 50% of the time 1, then it's not skewed towards either direction, and this S value will indeed be 0 for such signals. Now, if we consider the structure of the anti-sap block where we have two almost complementary blocks, whereas where we have an entry and an entry, we'll, we'll observe two signals that are skewed in opposite directions, and these are skewed all the way towards negative 0.5, and positive 0.5. As the onset, the p-value, approaches very small or very large values, this, this skew will be observed uh, towards 0.5 or towards negative 0.5. And these two oppositely skewed uh, signals will be converging at a gate that produces the output y, which is injecting the error into the original circuit. So we can follow this as a trace and the structural analysis looks for a gate where two oppositely skewed signals are converging and the output of that gate is most likely the output of the anti-sat block. The problem in anti-sat is that once this block, the boundaries of the block, is identified with this signal probability skew analysis, if you remove the anti-sat block, you're left with the original circuit with possibly uh, locked by simple means such as fault analysis based or random uh, logic locking which we know that that can be bro broken by SAT attacks or sensitization attacks. So after removing the anti-SAT block, a SAT attack or sensitization attack may be uh, launched on the remaining circuit and the remaining locking mechanism can be also broken and that's how the anti-SAT defense is broken. And we also observe that as the key size increases, as long as we have a very small onset or a very large onset, the, uh, the skews will, the absolute difference between the two oppositely skewed signals will further increase, uh, making it easier to identify the output of the anti-SAT block. So for larger key sizes, this attack, the signal probability skew attack, SPS attack, is expected to be even more and more effective. So in this uh, presentation module, we talked about another SAT attack, resilient logic locking solution, which is anti-SAT. It indeed protects against the SAT attack, but at the same time, it leaves certain traces behind, certain structural traces behind. And we also talked about a derivative attack, which is the signal probability skew attack that targets anti-SAT identifies the boundary of the anti-SAT block, removes it, and that's how it breaks the defense of anti-SAT. Thank you very much for listening.